five beds or fewer that have little to no surge capacity. All right, Jay. Athena, thank you so much. Joining me now to discuss Dr. Lisa Dabby. She's an emergency physician, uh, emergency medicine physician at UCLA Health. Uh, Dr. Dabby, thanks for joining us. The number of cases continues to rise every day. Um, how long do you think it will be until hospitals are, are overrun? You just can't handle the influx. Jake, that's a tough question to answer. We have definitely seen an increase in the patients coming in. This week is incredibly different than last week. It is here. We're seeing patients coming in. I anticipate that in the next one to two weeks, we're going to start to see very large volumes of very sick people. In Italy, it was reported that because of the lack of ventilators, doctors ultimately had to choose who would get one, potentially deciding between patients as to who lives and, and who dies? I mean, ventilators, I don't know how much the public understands this. Ventilators do breathing for people who cannot breathe on their own. Do you think that that potentially could happen here in the United States? I really hope not, Jake. You know, ventilators do keep people alive. They breathe for them when they can't breathe. They increase the amount of oxygen the patient can receive when they're not able to do it on their own. And they're crucial to keeping people who are critically sick alive. You know, the whole goal of social distancing is to slow down the speed of transmission so that we don't get overwhelmed, so that we don't have thousands of people coming in at the same time needing ventilators, because we don't have thousands of ventilators. It's not going to work. I personally don't want to be in a position where we have to let somebody die. That's not what we do in the United States of America. We've got to work to keep everybody alive, and we've got to work to increase supply so that we have enough ventilators should we need them. So the CDC changed some of their guidelines. I, I think they did this ult ultimately to, in a way to, of, of acknowledging uh, the dire conditions that hospitals may soon find themselves in. People like you, uh, they recommended that healthcare workers, as a last resort, might think about reusing masks uh, or even using a scarf or a bandana. What do you think of that? So I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I can't imagine putting on a bandana to go take care of a patient with a highly infectious disease that could kill me. I will not do that. We need our health care providers, doctors, nurses, techs, respiratory therapists. We need everybody healthy and strong to fight this virus. We cannot let our health care workers get sick. If they get sick, there's going to be nobody left standing to take care of the influx of patients. And so the priority right now should really be to increase production of personal protective equipment for health care workers. We know that young people with mild symptoms who think they have coronavirus should stay home. What about if an elderly patient uh, has symptoms uh, and the hospitals are overrun and there's a lack of supplies? Should they stay home, too, unless they obviously need, you know, dire medical help at, at once? So we're advising everybody, all ages, if your symptoms are mild and you can manage them at home, please stay home. The mild cases will get better on their own. We really want to reserve the emergency department in the hospitals for the people who are critically ill, for the people who can't breathe and need oxygen, for the people who are vomiting and getting dehydrated, for the people whose blood pressure is low and they're confused. Those are the people we want to see in the ER, regardless of age. Check right. in with your doctor, call your doctor, see if they recommend that you go to the ER or not. Dr. Lisa Dabby, thank you and thank all of the people on the ER staffs, the nurses, the nurse practitioners, the custodians, the people answering the phones. We know how horrible it is and it's going to get even worse. And stay in touch. Let us know what you need so we can keep bringing attention to this. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate the help. One senator has a message for those beaches.